What's going on everybody? Brandon Charleston here coming at you with another quick tutorial in Loom. It's been a while since I've posted a video, but uh, with a lot of things going on, moving and all that stuff, I am back here hopefully with another piece of valuable information that you can take home with you in your clay tables in your wonderful offices. So uh, in this table, I'm going to go over something that I just continuously noticed that clay has developed and evolved and uh, none other than Claygent. Uh, Claygent just continuously just, you know, is get better and better and is impressing me all the time and so I just wanted to demonstrate a quick uh, use case here so hopefully you guys could take it and run with it as well so this particular client of mine uh, they tasked me with uh, scraping basically the entire United States uh, for all HVAC contractors so that rendered about 86,000 leads uh, and so which case I uh, separated out uh, for 36,000 for the second part of it and so we went ahead and uh, start with just a thousand just to make sure you know that uh, data is consistent before we let it rip at scale and so uh, so yeah this is essentially a uh, Google Maps data and so I propagated uh, and appended all the data here you have a website you know your usual stuff uh, email address this particular integration called Zenrose it's a wonderful integration. It's very common uh, for me to you know, be able to scrape website. So if you just need the data from a website, you can really just run a Zen Rose or you're going to get all their information, uh, essentially their HTML that's populated on there. And uh, in this instance, I just went ahead and you know, scraped their email address. So um, this is another integration I did as far as matching the company domain uh, with their email address because more often than not, if they actually have an official email address, you know, tied to their domain, they're probably a bit more established versus your one-man bands, you know, at Gmails and stuff. Not to say a Gmail business is not successful, uh, but in this case, uh, we're rolling with this one. So, getting to the, to the point of uh, where all the sauce is uh, that I'm recording for. Essentially, um, what I did uh, with Claygent is uh, I'm taking their company name and then I'm just simply having it Google. Uh, their company name and Zoom Info, right? Zoom Info is a great data source. Uh, there's a lot of good public information that you don't necessarily have to have to have a membership or a, a login for it. And so, what you could do is just do Google search Zoom Info, the company name, and I'll put only the Zoom Info URL with a company tagline at the end of the URL. And then what you'll notice here is you can actually define the column outputs now, similar to Claydent's Neon except in this use case, I'm using GPT-40 Mini as the LLM, right? And the one big thing that I always talk about in my YouTube and across everything is with LLMs, you really want to define what the role is. There's three things. The role, okay, so you can give it the persona that you wanted to uh, respond with, the parameters of which the task that you want to do, and then the output that you desire, right? But this one is really specific to task. So really, I'm just giving it a task with a specific output, right? I don't need to necessarily say you are, you know, an executive or some sort of research analyst, although that could help. But this is just a very simple task. Um, but focus here is now you have the ability to define, you know, essentially the confidence, which is low, medium, high, and very high. And then uh, you can define the parameters that you want to do, such as the URL, if you wanted to output a specific URL, uh, true, false, if it's going to be uh, something that you want to have binary, like true or false, a number, text, you know, select, and then email address. So in this case, I had to output a URL, right? These two fields uh, don't really need to be saved uh, on there. And so I essentially had it, you know, output a URL, which is their Zoom info URL, right? Same thing with Crunchbase. I just had a Google a crunch base URL with their company name and then it gave me exactly uh, what their URLs are, right? And then what I did is I continue with this workflow. Uh, one of the big things that uh, my client really wanted to uh, know as much as possible if the data is there is company headcount and then revenue. And uh, some things that are publicly available with Crunchbase and Zoom Info is exactly those, uh, those metrics, right? So if we just go to, for example, um, Let's see here. Uh, a lot of the things that I noticed with Zoom Info, if it's less than 5 million, they'll actually just say less than 5 million. But if it's anything more, obviously, like this case, it's 6.2. So if we go to their uh, Zoom Info page here, uh, it should scrape through literally their website, which you can see 6.2, right? And then same with the uh, company headcount. So 51 to 100. And if we go to their crunch base, 
you can see here, oh, looks like I visited too much. So, uh, but it said 51 to 200 there, or 51 to 100, right? So anyway, I've consistently tested this, and then you'll notice uh, with the agent, uh, clay agent, I should say, that uh, one big thing here, like I said, you could use the uh, GBT-40 Mini, uh, which still to date is still one of the most cost-effective uh, LLMs out there from OpenAI, but uh, you'll want to really define the outputs here. And then uh, just to you know summarize, what I did is I took it a step further, is this particular AI agent, uh, clay agent, I should say, is I used GPT-40 Mini, and all I did simply was start with visit the website, which is the Zoom Info website, and output the revenue value only. It did that exactly how I wanted it to, which is the parameter of revenue and then revenue, right? Then I wanted to just test to see, okay, if it has the company linked in on the same website, which it does in, in some scenarios, is I have it output just the URL, right? So I did that. And then look what we have here. It output, in some cases, the company URL. Uh, so like this one, I tested is good. But then you'll notice here, if it doesn't exist, it'll say Zoom Info and my company, which clearly is, is not the case, right? So what I would need to do is just refine the output or the, uh, the prompt here to say if it does not exist, just list it like not found or something like that. So, And then I went ahead a little deeper and said, also, I'll put the owner of the company. Make sure the person is listed as the owner. And then uh, it went ahead and did that as well. And so um, you can see not listed. We have Sue and Jason. And then very well, if you go to, we'll just go to Sue, for example. So you can see here, well, that's the Crunchbase listing. My apologies. We'll go to the Zoom info. And if we scroll down, you can see here, Sue is the CEO. So she's probably the owner, right? She's going to be the top of the top of who I want to talk to. And then same for the, the rest of them, right? So you can just very well see how exactly Clagent has kind of evolved, um, you know, being able to not only populate the Zoom Info and Crunchbase, which are great data points, without a membership, but also use it uh, with the parameters here on uh, being able to uh, define more parameters uh, specific to how you want it. And then uh, Clagent will then be able to output structured data uh, with different columns associated with that, even if you are giving it more than one task, right? So uh, I hope this is helpful. Hope this is valuable. Uh, you know, really appreciate uh, your support and watching this and uh, have a great rest of your uh, day and weekend and happy claim making.